Star Wars Lost Stars by Claudia Gray. This is such a good book. I genuinely love this book. The story was great, the characters were great, the little references to the rest of the Star Wars universe were great. Not too much, just the right amount, and Claudia Gray's writing itself. I love J.K. Rowling's writing, not just the Harry Potter stories, but the order she puts the words down on the paper and how much she actually says or doesn't say. It always feels like every word is there for a reason and not as filler. Nothing feels wasted in her writing, she makes her books very fluid to read. Claudia Gray does the same thing. Reading Lost Stars almost feels like J.K. Rowling has written a Star Wars book. Sometimes books can be brought down because of a lack of style in the actual prose. It can dull interest in spite of having good characters and a good story. This is why I've always preferred Kevin J. Anderson over Timothy Zahn. The Jedi Academy trilogy just had better flow, in my opinion. It had the right amount of levity to it too, compared to Zahn's Thrawn trilogy and Hand of Thrawn duology. Claudia Gray tells a good story and she does it in an interesting way. Lost Stars follows the lives of two citizens of the planet Jellican, freshly joined to the now eight-year-old Galactic Empire. They come from two separate races, both human, but one is from the original settlers of the planet, who live in the mountains, and one from later settlers of the planet, a more modern material race. It's the difference between these two sets of humans, the differences in their beliefs and honour systems, that are the backbone of the book. It's this that drives the characters to do what they do, make the choices they make, and it's been done very, very well. It isn't the case of some made-up system that would only exist in a fantasy universe like Star Wars or Lord of the Rings. Honor systems like this exist in today's world, which just makes it more believable. Sienna Ree, a member of the Mountain community and descendant of Jellican's original settlers, was raised with a much more rigid honour system, believing that no matter what, when a promise is made, it must be honoured. Thane Kyrell, descendant of the later settlers, a much more urban and material people, has morals just as strong as Sienna Ree, but believes that a promise can be broken when the other party has gone back on its word first. This difference in opinion drives so much of the characters' actions, and it works really well. It's interesting to see two people with strong morals interpret a situation so differently and how differently they act because of it. So Lost Stars begins on Jellican eight years after the birth of the Empire, on the day it joins the Empire. Jellican is having a celebration festival to honour its becoming part of the Empire, and everyone travels to Valencia, the capital city, for the celebrations. Grand Moff Tarkin has travelled to Jellican for its inauguration day. He's barely in the book, literally just a couple of pages, but I thought it was brilliant the way Claudia Gray wrote him. Yeah, he gives a typical speech to the Jellicani welcoming them to the Empire, but it's what happens after that that's interesting. Thane and Sienna are both children and don't actually know each other yet, but they both dream of being pilots and so both sneak into the hangars to get a good look at the ships. Sienna gets bullied there by some of the city people for the rags she wears and her simple rural way of life. She gets in a scrap with them. Thane sees this and joins in defending Sienna, when Tarkin walks out and catches them. All except Sienna and Thane run away, leaving them to deal with Tarkin. Instead of berating them for being naughty, he talks to them in an almost grandfatherly sort of way. He asks them what they want to be when they're older, and when they both say pilots, he lets them sit in the cockpit of his ship. <laughs> I really enjoyed this part because this is probably the only time Tarkin has ever been shown in nothing but a good light. He's always portrayed to be essentially evil, cold, calculating and ruthless. But here, Grey shows another side of him, which I know is in contrast with the way he's always been shown before, but actually works. I can see Tarkin being nice to a couple of kids. He doesn't need to be cold and ruthless with them. So why not? It's a good bit of character writing, it was well placed and well done. Thane and Sienna become friends after that, and this is where the book really gets going. It's a lot of fun to watch how they grow up together, learning to fly together, and just being who they are, together. You follow Thane and Sienna through their teenage years, the Imperial Academy, and in the service of the Empire, and during the war. All of it is just a joy to read. It's fun, and it's interesting, and it's very, very captivating. Claudia Gray has written the characters so well, at times I was practically shouting at the book because I genuinely felt invested in these characters. The last time I was so invested in characters that I actually shouted at the characters when I was about 13 and Smallville was on season 1 and you could see how in love with Lana Clark was. And again, back then I was shouting at the TV. Claudia Gray has really written these characters well and it takes a good author to get me shouting at a book because I'm so caught up in the plot and the character dynamics and she has done just that. There's a split in the story where one of them, and I won't say who, 
decides to join the rebellion. It's fascinating to see how the dynamics between Sienna and Thane work at this point, and we get to see them interact with various Star Wars characters like Vader, Tarkin, Mon Mothma, and Commandant Dean Lark, who later appeared in Timothy Zahn's Thrawn novel. It's a nice little touch they've been doing regularly in these Star Wars novels, having characters from other books appear, even if they don't appear in things like the movies or TV shows. It just helps to make you believe that what you're reading really is about one whole galaxy rather than an isolated story set in the same galaxy. There are a few good set pieces as well. There's the Battle of Hoth, both Death Star battles and how the Rebels found their base on Dakar. That's the base that you see in The Force Awakens. One of the more interesting side characters for me was Nash Windrider. He's a character that shows exactly how the Empire affects people and what people will do to deal with the Empire one way or another. And I'm not going to delve into that here because it, you should read it for yourself, it's well worth the time. He's again another character that's been written so well. He's just a very interesting character and it's worth reading through it to experience his story. I'd like to see what becomes of Nash in future books. I'm halfway through Life Debt, then I'll be reading Empire's End and then I'll be able to read Bloodline, so I'm hoping he shows up in one of them. I'm aware that the Battle of Jakku features in Empire's End, so I hope I'll see more of him there. Speaking of the Battle of Jakku, I did have one issue with this book. It ends so abruptly. Like, the character stories quite simply are not wrapped up. It's left as a cliffhanger. I'd like to see Claudia Gray either write a continuation where it gets wrapped up or have the character stories continue in another book so we at least find out what happens, even if it's just a side story. I hope it will be one of the last parts of Empire End or at the beginning of Bloodline as a flashback, but if it's not, the story does need to be resolved somehow. It's just not fair to lead someone along 500 pages and then just end the book. Also, I've read Aftermath and I'll be doing a review of it soon. I just can't understand why though. After having read both books, Lost Stars wasn't considered an adult novel. It just makes no sense to me. Because it's classed as a young adult novel, the hardback version is slightly smaller in height. That makes it wider when you look at the spine. And when you look at the spine, while it's sitting next to Aftermath or Twilight Company, you can see it's the same width. So I just know if Claudia Gray had been given the opportunity to write it as a full adult novel and been given the time, and I'm assuming there was a deadline and that's why the book ends so abruptly, it would have been the same size as an adult novel. I mean, as it is right now, the book is the same height as Ahsoka, which is also classed as a young adult novel, but it's nearly twice the width across the spine. Lost Stars, in my opinion, deserve to be a full adult novel. Overall, in spite of the ending, and I'm hoping it's resolved in Empire's End, Lost Stars is an absolutely excellent book. The story's good, the characters are good, the character growth is the most I've ever seen in the Star Wars book, and that's including the old extended universe. Legends? I've got 70 Legends books at the moment, and none of them come close to the amount of character growth you get in Lost Stars. And it is because you see them grow from children to adults, learning to make their own choices. And I do understand that not every book can be like that, and it certainly can't be like that in the movies. But I'm glad it was like that in Lost Stars because it's done the characters a world of good because we get so much deeper into their lives and we see them grow. Claudia Gray's writing is as entertaining as J.K. Rowling's. Like I said earlier, not a word wasted. Everything is entertaining and makes you want to read more. Of all the new canon Star Wars novels, Lost Stars is the only one I've read so far where I actually wish there were more hours in the day just so I could read the book more. On the inside jacket cover, and I mentioned this in, I think it was my Aftermath review, and if that's not up yet, it will be the next one. Um, on the inside jacket cover it says, it says Claudia Gray has been a Star Wars fan since she was seven and she now insists that transforming her childhood closet into an X-Wing simulator was vital career preparation. You know what, I believe that. It shines through in Lost Stars how much she loves Star Wars. She hasn't just written a book, she seems to have carefully crafted a tale in the Star Wars universe. C crafted characters that draw you in, they make you care. This, in my opinion, wasn't just a job where she's been hired to write a book that fits into the current canon. This, for me, seems like she was offered a job and then she probably went out and got hammered celebrating afterwards because it's always been a life dream. It just reads that well that I can believe she enjoyed writing every minute of the book. 
Lost Stars is an absolutely excellent book and I cannot wait until I get to read Bloodline. I need to finish Life Debt and then I need to read Empire's End. But I enjoyed Lost Star so much, the book I'm looking forward to reading next is the next piece of Claudia Gray's work, and that's Bloodline. And since that's the last one, the last novel in the timeline before The Force Awakens, I have to read the others first, especially since Aftermath is considered the most plot-rich, well the Aftermath trilogy is considered the most plot-rich of all the books concerning the sequel trilogy. I know Claudia Gray has done the new Leia novel as well, so I cannot wait to read that too. Lost Stars is just a fantastic book. Buy it, read it, read it again. You will love it. I loved it. If you don't love it, there's something wrong with you. It's a fantastic book.